regarding uh, the unfortunate passing of Liam Payne, ABC News did a little feature on the pink cocaine that was found in his sub that was found in his body due to the toxicology report. So pink cocaine has now become a <laughs> a new trending term um obviously some of us have probably heard about it through our partying ways <laughs> some of us may have heard about it because of diddy but now i guess more people are becoming aware of what pink cocaine is due to liam payne's unfortunate passing in argentina so this is a segment courtesy of abc news C has found a former one direction singer liam payne had several substances including pink cocaine in his system when he fell to his death in his hotel in argentina so what is is pink cocaine. Thank you again for joining us here on ABC yeah, 7. What is Hulu that stuff? What streaming. is that I'm stuff, Colleen man? I'm Colleen Sullivan, in for David Ono. I'm Ellen Leva. Pink cocaine has also been mentioned in one of the civil lawsuits against Sean Diddy Combs. So what exactly is pink cocaine? That good I shit. want this reporter Leticia Lada spoke shit. to law enforcement and public health officials to find out what the drug is and what it does to the body. Heaven no regrets. A partial autopsy revealed former One Direction singer Liam Payne had multiple substances in his system when he plunged to his death from a third floor balcony in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Oh, Toxicology results show he had a mix of drugs, including one called pink cocaine. Mm. The first piece that we almost always see in pink or pink cocaine is ketamine, a dissociative drug, mm. something that makes people feel like they're detached from reality. The second component is a psychedelic. Bill Bodner is a former DEA agent. Oh, look at, look at he says switching. despite its name, oftentimes there is no cocaine in the toxic mix of drugs, yep. which includes synthetics like ecstasy, methamphetamine, and benzodiazepines. The drug, also known as Tusi, acts as both a stimulant and a depressant. They say it's really popular in Miami as well, by the way. It's popular here. No, it's not popular in the UK. It's more popular in mainland Europe. I think I've heard people taking it more in Europe than I have done taking it here in the UK. But I've heard in places like Miami and shit, it's really popular in obviously South America. Very, very cheap to make. And uh, they can kind of tailor the drug to what the drug user is looking for, the perceived effects that the drug user is looking for. Pink cocaine got its start in Latin American nightclubs as a part party drug. Recently, it was linked to Sean Diddy Combs in a lawsuit filed by his former music producer, Rodney Jones. He alleges it was required all employees, from the butler, the chef to the housekeepers, Oy. to walk around with a pouch or fanny pack filled with cocaine, GHB, ecstasy, marijuana gummies, and Tusi, a pink drug that is a combination of ecstasy and cocaine. That is a vibe, isn't it? Imagine you popping into fucking Diddy's crib to just like, I don't know, sign some documents, check over some brand stuff marketing stuff and it's just it's just these nice lovely guatemalan women who are like they may look like maids or they may look like cleaners or child minders with fucking silver platters <laughs> these hermes plates of pink cocaine and kids running around like it must be such a mind trip like you're like oh my god this guy's a fucking psycho there's kids around and there's people just with trays carrying them around sniffing all over the place like god almighty absolute freak ball. But like any drug, there are several dangerous side effects on the body and the user's perception of reality. One of the things around mixtures such as this is people's behavior might become unpredictable and they might do things that they wouldn't have otherwise done. The drug is also a possible factor in Payne's behavior in the minutes leading up to the 31 year old. has found okay, a form. Cool. There we go. So, um, yeah, really, really sad to be fair, um, you know, with how it kind of played out for him. You could imagine, you know, he was just trying to have a good time. And unfortunately, he did too much, like the definition of doing too much. And it kind of went a bit crazy. The funny thing is, I remember, I don't think I mentioned it here, but from what I remember in Europe, when I went to Berlin, I remember a lot of people were saying that the pink cocaine over there was mixed with 3MMC or 4MMC, basically methadrone. So it's basically a mix of methadrone, ketamine and MDMA or something like that. That was kind of what they were doing out there. So they had legitimately no cocaine in it but the idea of it was just obviously to put you know coloring in it to make it give it that pink color um but if i'm if i'm not mistaken the idea behind it kind of comes from the thinking that people sometimes enjoy doing cocaine and ketamine together that sort of like upper and down i think they call it like calvin and klein right so i think that basically is where it kind of comes from but i guess with all drug with all drugs and with all addicts there's it's never enough just to do that thing you have to do more so you push it you push it you start adding more shit to it I remember that Vice video was really unsettling because I think the dealer that was making it was literally putting everything. Like, it almost seemed like the dealers in South America kind of like, you know, because I, I guess you can't really sell drugs there really high or expensive because it comes straight from the source. So there's only, a, you know, you can only get a certain amount of profit. So you're trying to look for the next angle, the next thing to kind of, you know, 
um, hype up the market and get your customers hyped to whatever. So he was literally just sitting in his house and his trap, just pouring whatever he had left out, left in a bowl. That was a mad thing. I was like, Jesus Christos, like anything, anything, anything and everything. So it's obviously open to cross-contamination. Like people mentioned in the stream chat, you're opening to maybe, you know, getting dosed with fucking fentanyl and shit. It can get really dicey and really scary really quickly. So the people that do do it, you have to be aware of that danger. Obviously, you're rolling the dice in that regard because you have no, you literally have no idea what's in it. Um, someone could tell you what they think is in it, but you'd have no idea unless you're the one that made it yourself. Um, but regardless, man, it, it sent you know it sent Lee and Payne down a weird path to the point where people are saying that he might have been unco like that's the thing that's really scary. They're saying that he might have been unconscious when he fell from that um, balcony. The really scary thing when you saw the video. The balcony was very low. It's kind of standard South American, non-Western kind of building regulations. The barrier on, you know, on the balcony of his window was super low. I'm going to say it might have been like waist height. So the type of bar balcony that, you know, you could easily fall over even if you weren't trying, even if you weren't fucked up just because of how low it is. Um, I don't think you could ever get that sort of thing in like a Western hotel. Do you know what I mean? They, could, they would never let you have that sort of thing. So it was always, he was always going to be in danger and probably even more so if he was drunk or high and shit. So I repeat to Liam Payne, same way. But now pink cocaine is becoming super popular. So don't be surprised if you hear your local dealer talking about it now because it's been popularized all over the place. And we know one thing, dealers are very aware of the current trends and the markets and how people are talking and things are shifting. So it wouldn't surprise me if suddenly people start selling, you know, pink the pink cocaine that killed Liam Payne and shit out on the market and going crazy over that, which is crazy to say. I know. I know it's crazy to say that, but don't be surprised if you do see it. Don't be surprised if you do see it.